Welcome to the Get Real Podcast, your high octane boost of full on reality therapy for personal, business, and investing success with your host, Ron Phillips, because somebody's got to tell it like it is. Hello, and welcome back to the Get Real Podcast. I am your host solo today, again, Heather Marchant. And Ron is still on vacation, which he's having a blast. So that's awesome. He'll come back well rested. (laughs) So excited to talk with you today because I am on location. For those of you watching on YouTube, um, you will see that I am not in my regular place. I am in Oklahoma. And this is only something I've done a handful of times. But I am lucky enough to meet with one of our builders that we work with. Um, We talk about our long-term relationships on here a lot, and we work with builders and rehabbers for, man, a long time. I think our longest relationship is going over 15 years, and we build these long-term relationships where we are looking out to have both of us succeed, which is kind of unique in the real estate world, I think. Um, So I am here with Willard Barnett. He is a builder of 31 years in Oklahoma City. So super excited that he was willing to sit down with me because I think if I wasn't here, Willard, with you in person, I'm not sure if we would be having this conversation because technology and doing this over video conference probably wouldn't be your jam. Uh, You're (laughs) correct. It's it's not. (laughs) So we are um, excited because this is something I've been wanting to talk about on here, the need for affordable housing. specifically in Oklahoma City, because this is where Willard is. But there is a need for affordable housing across the country. And I think everyone listening knows that housing has become so expensive. Correct. Trying to have someone be able to afford their first home. I mean, you have your granddaughter that you've been raising and having someone that someone that doesn't maybe have a leg, to, a leg up from their parents or whatever, to be able to afford buying a house, it's definitely, definitely difficult. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's the pandemic in our country in 20 and 21 and 22 has raised prices like I've never seen. I mean, your land costs, your lot costs used to be in the metro here in the 25 to 40. Now it's 80 to 100. And that's why you see all the apartments being built is is people need a place to live, that they feel safe, that they can raise their family. Mm-hmm. And and we also build apartments. And a two-bedroom, one-bath apartment in Oklahoma City is 1500 to 1800 Yeah. And they have no yard. They can't in, uh, the kids can't enjoy uh, pets and, and things like that. I started my career in 1991 with Bell American Homes. We were one of the top three affordable home builders. Uh, and the thrill of getting someone a home that never thought they could afford it is something that really gives me a high. I, uh, I love that part of the business. And we've done as many as 400 homes a year. Uh, after the pandemic, we sat down and looked at it. And we had a city attorney that represents 26 rural towns. They're all close to Oklahoma City. We went to a town called Perry. They have a large company called Ditchwich, and 2% of Ditchwich employees is all that lives in the city. There was no affordability. And we went up there and and started building some 12, 14, 1500 square foot houses. But with the pandemic, it wasn't affordable. So, so only two percent of the of the people that work there could live in Perry, right? Wow! And so the the attorney came to me and said, "We need to figure out they want Tor- Toro just bought Ditchwich. It's their Cadillac of all their operations in the world, and they're wanting wanting a new fifty eight million dollar expansion." So one of my friends was telling me about the cottages they were doing in Dallas on the east side that was affordable for anyone that wanted to have a two bedroom, two bath, a yard. So we went and have done our research and now we're stick building uh two bedroom, two bath um 
that's affordable. Any they may not yeah. take it, but anybody can afford that. Yeah, and uh, we're in the eight fifty to nine hundred to a thousand r- range, and they have a fenced backyard. They have granite countertops. They have the BGT flooring. Uh, they're nice, and it's something that we we have really seen a need in all the bedroom communities around Oklahoma City that uh, we have. 60 that were are at banks and getting ready to come out. We we just started one, showed it to Heather yesterday. Yeah. And it's built just like any house we build, the same quality, the same uh, deal, but it's affordable. They yeah. can still have a vacation. They can still buy a new car. They can still uh, go to the movies on Friday night. And yeah. And it's, it's something that we want to do. I think that um, one thing that caught my eye is that, you have these towns where you have a housing shortage. And one thing that you had mentioned to me, Willard, was that you have a problem that these bigger builders can't come in and make it happen because of the cost to build. Right. That it didn't make sense. Correct. So you have this um, unique situation where you have a need for housing. You told me that some of these towns even are gifting you land or giving it yes. to you for pennies. Yes. They, <laughs> there's never, the, these towns haven't had any new construction in years. And the availability of a small rent house in one of the towns, I mean, they're they're just not worthy of putting, if, if my family had to move to one of them, I don't know what I would do because they're not, up to code the the landlords typically don't take care of it i handle all customer service in our company it comes to me first we try to do what's right that's uh and we've done that for a long time we've always we we make sure that uh that the families feel safe we we build a nice home it's uh it's something that uh, they can afford and still have a life for their family because kids you know, they're in soccer, they're in baseball, they're in flag football, and uh, it's not free. So yeah. we want them to have a place to live, feel safe, and they can still have a family life. So yeah. that's why we're doing this. It's uh, We're a little bit behind. I have got I got sick in early part of the year and couldn't do anything for three, four months. And But now we've got two that we started. We framed them in 11 days uh, with all our top outs. So we think they're going to be a 90 day product. They, they can come pick their colors. Yeah. They can pick their granite. They can just like the a building a custom home. One thing that I was amazed by when we went by that one yesterday in Chickasha, um, that it was up in 12 days. It was like a barn raising as far as I'm concerned. You had all the plumbing, electrical, you had the framing, yeah. the roof, the, yeah, the HVAC. It was amazing. Yeah. And, and, and that's, <laughs> you know, we, we, one of the things that I do take pride in that we have the same framer that we had in 1990. Oh. You know, Darvis has been with us for, and he, and he cares about it. He has the same philosophy with us. Let's do it as fast as we can. Now, the pen, pandemic hurt every builder. I don't care what size they were. You wait, waited 18 weeks for windows. You know, your daytimes went from four and a half to six months to 18 to two years. And, it just it and it was frustrating not only to us but our buyers. They kept having to pay rent. They their interest rate would rise, and so this is something we want to do. I want to finish my career doing this. I hope my team will take it and keep it going when it's my, my time to go home. And, and uh, the people that we're dealing with in these cities, they welcome us with open arms, and we think it's a great product for not only people to buy, but for investors, because yeah. it's not an apartment. It's built like a single family home. And like I say, it's stick framed. It has granite countertops. Uh, we don't take anything out of it that we don't, that we put in our other homes. Yeah. So it's, uh, and it's affordability. It's something that uh, for some reason, uh, housing is, is probably tripled in the last two and a half years and we don't see it coming i'm never there's 86 items that go in a house we've always had small increases over the years but all 86 items went up and they're not coming back and so we have to be able to 
get a group of guys together and that have the same values we have affordability and Mm -hmm. it's a little harder because we were out in outside of the city but it's been a blessing so far yeah um i i'm impressed when we talked with the um i think it was just the contractor that was out there the superintendent he said that he has like multiple people a day yes. that stop by and say, what are you building? How much is it going to rent for? Like, yes. <laughs> that there's such a need. And when I couldn't believe the dilapidated homes that were rentals, you know, I mean, just poor condition and you're right, not well-maintained. Right. And one of the things that we're seeing uh, when we started this back in February, uh, we had this attorney, he represents 26 rural towns up and down I-40 and I-30. Uh, I think the father's one is 45 minutes from us. And now we're having cities call us because the city managers are telling them, call Willard. He'll come do this. <laughs> and I can't do all of them. I wish I could, but I I don't want to. I want to do the ones that we agreed to do and keep it. I think we can do this. You know, we're not trying to go out there and do 30, 40. We're trying to do 12 to 15 a year per city improve the city and give people options and we're also developers so when we build a uh, 40 50 in a city after three or four years then those people eventually want to buy a house well we'll develop a piece of dirt build a neighborhood sidewalks where kids can go to schools and walk to schools or ride their bike so we love this we think it's uh, something that uh, is well needed <laughs> you know and uh, so it's it's been a joy so far. So can you talk a little bit about the communities you did you did choose to build in? Because you've chosen eh, maybe five or six, I think, for yes. right now. <clears throat> talk about why. Well, the first one would be Lawton. We have a development in Lawton that we did, and it's got four sales. It's a town of ninety two thousand people, and. We had the, I had a friend that was building a large factory down there and he said, man, I need some new rentals. So we went down, met with the city, bought some lots from the city and the need we met yesterday with a lady that will manage all the properties and she was a housing authority at Fort Sills for 23 years and she's taken our stuff to the base Fort Sills in Lawton is a training base that every soldier comes there to learn how to do their job. They're only there for three weeks to eight weeks, and they were tired of putting them in old run-down rentals and things like that. The commander is excited about what we're doing. And not only there, but Perry. You know, Perry has Ditchwich. We have Paul's Valley that has two food distribution centers. They have 700 employees. Nobody lives in the town of Paul's Valley because there's nothing there affordable to rent. Or if it is, it's run down. Nobody takes care of it. So we have a large job in he- ahead of us, but we, ha- we have most of my guys have been with me for 20 plus years. So we have the same philosophy. If it's broken, go fix it. Mm-hmm. And that's why we're still here. That's why. We have a reputation of doing what's right 100% of the time. And we just think this is a great opportunity for us as a company uh, because single family is still way too high. We were building uh, houses before the pandemic at $80 a foot. Now it's $130 a foot. And you still have certain windows that you can't get in a timely manner. So our daytimes, and with rates going from 3.5%, to 11% on construction loans, your interest is just, it's hard to do on a 18 month house. And so we made this decision. Uh, we have a goal of turning everything on the cottage side in 90 days. And so far the first two are going to be, they'll hit that for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's, that's what we're trying to do. So you also have some other small towns too, because Lawton's Decent size. Yeah. I mean, oh, 92,000 people. Yeah. So Chickasha, Shawnee, Chickasha. talk about why, just like high high level, why you went there. Well, it again, it was city managers calling us mm-hmm. and saying, hey, we hear that you're willing to go and do this there. Will you come here? And our kind of rule of thumb 
is anything with 3,000 and up in a rural Oklahoma town, uh, you can go do 12 to 15 a year, and one man can take care of that. We don't have to have multiple uh, superintendents, and we're, we're hitting a need nobody wants to deal with. It, it takes time to get it set up, learn the rules of the city. Every city has different rules. And so the opportunity, there's there's 11 of us here. So we think we can go do 11 cities and we'll have 11 cities waiting on us when we fill that city up and go the next. And it'll never go away if yeah. we do it right. It, yeah. It's unbelievable. I've seen... Um a lot of them just have a lot of expansion, a lot of job growth, and there's just not enough housing to really grow the town. Right. I mean, the towns are seeing growth, but they don't have the housing to support it. And so people have to commute or their town just misses out on that growth. So it's kind of fun helping those small towns level up Absolutely. like they want to. Absolutely. you know. And one, one of the things, my wife was a teacher for 43 years. And she told me one day, she said, you know, every school, loses a certain amount of teachers every year by retirement, by uh, getting married, moving off. And one of those towns hired 20 teachers last year. Wow. And they signed a contract. They couldn't find anything in that town of 8,000 people that was affordable for a school teacher. Well, that's kind of part of me. My wife taught school forever. And she loved her job. And so that's another thing that the superintendent called me. So we're now building five cottages up there. Uh, we'll end up probably with 18 to 20 in that town by school end of the year. And now he's got something that teachers can come look at. The teachers can pick their granite. They can pick their color. Because you know, a lot of teachers will stay forever because they love their kids. Yeah. That's a really good point. I think making a difference at that grassroots level is oh, really rewarding. It, yeah. And we don't do that anymore. Everybody yeah. wants to build a half a million dollar house. And, you know, so we have chosen to shut down our single family side and just focus on this for the next five years. And my family is is here in it. Uh, my nephews and cousins and guys have been with me for 20 years. They're going to keep doing this when I retire. It it, it will never go away. It, yeah. You can always, and it, it just, and the people are so welcoming to us as a team of thank you for doing this. Yeah. And it's been amazing. That's awesome. Um, I think being here, I've been here for three days. This is day three, you guys. And being here and seeing the need, seeing the need being filled for investors to have an affordable product. I mean, these homes are, and for investors, under $140,000. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And that's really, I mean, if you look at the same cottage in Oklahoma City, it's two fifty. Yeah. you know, and it's not any bigger. It's not nearly as nice as what we're putting in our product. And it's been, I mean, it's been a, a lot of fun. It's been hard, yeah. you know, because some of the cities have more rules than Oklahoma City does in building, and but we adapt to it. We want to be a team player, and and uh, and I think it's going to be amazing. Yeah, uh, the the smaller footprint makes a big difference in being able to do this in a timely manner. Yes, which makes a big difference too, because I think my biggest frustration in being here has been that you can't go any faster. Right. Despite the demand and despite the people needing the housing, the towns needing the housing, investors needing the product to buy, the the biggest hurdle I've seen is the construction loan. Oh, absolutely. It, it's the banks. There, there's so much commercial construction being done in Oklahoma City. They're building a new Thunder Arena for a billion dollars. And the banks are just, they're, they're, they're loaned up. And the time frame of building a house used to be 90 days. Well, there's very, very few people that build 100 plus homes a year that can hit that number. The time to, to build it, the interest rates, you know, you, your locks are only good for 60 days. You know, you go past that, then you got to pay another fee or lose your rate. It is so frustrating to deal with a young couple that's trying to get their first home. Another thing, it's like cars. Car payments today average. Six hundred and eighty-five dollars a month. Yeah, 
and you take a man and wife that both have jobs, they both have a car. Uh, I just had a friend buy a $30,000 car, pay, uh, car and his payment on 60 months was $561. Yeah. And when you look at a two-bedroom apartment, one bath, it's eighteen, $1,500 to $1,800 a month. And they they don't have any discretionary money to go to the movies or go to the OU football game or go on vacation. They have to work. Yeah. And, I mean, getting into maybe uh, some politics here, but you, you also prevent families from being able or want to grow a family. Absolutely. And have children. I mean, Well, that's, that's another thing. So one of the biggest statistics that we learned in the last couple of years is people aren't getting married. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, a guy told me that does this for a living that 22% of people that can get driver's license aren't yeah. getting, dr- getting get driver's license. Yeah. I mean, that floored me. I couldn't yeah. wait to get mine me too. <laughs> 60 years ago, you know, and, but they Uber, you yeah. know, thing, our country has changed, uh, you know, the workforce, you know, uh, finding somebody that wants to work and commit to doing it right and being there is so frustrating in today's time. I've worked all my life. I love what I do. I hope I can do it another 10, 15 years. I enjoy it so much. I still have the thrill of getting someone their first home. Yeah. And I go to every closing. I tell them, you know, you're going to have something go wrong, but call me. Yeah. I don't care if it's 12 o'clock at night. Call me. We will come fix it. Yeah. And we've we've had the same framer, same uh, heat and air guy for years. And they go out at midnight. It, you know, it gets hot here in the summer, and you've got a small baby, and you ain't got any air. Where our guys, we go, yeah. you know, and it's like I say, it, it's hard, but it's it's a career. It's yeah. what I chose to do, and and like I say, I just wish I was 30, 35 years old where I could <laughs> keep doing, it. keep doing it longer and longer. Yeah, I I have seen that in you, the spark and the the light of just like making some making something happen and oh, creating. Every day, every day, create that. That's really my best quality is I can I can create something. If somebody tells me in a meeting, this is what we're looking for. I know what plan to go find them and bring to them and show them. This is everything you asked for in your budget. And it's just, you know, it, it, it's a job. It's what I love to do. I love it. I, I, my father told me a long time ago, son, find something you love and do it. I've been doing this for 31 years and it's been wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think driving around town with you is really cool because you can drive by almost any part of town and say you had a hand in oh, how yeah. that came together, whether you built it or the land or it's really what a cool legacy. Yeah. It, we We built our first senior housing and i i moved my office to it my mother and daddy came to see me and we built 56 houses for seniors Hmm. and i showed it to my mom and dad my dad looked at you built every one of these (laughs) i mean it made me feel good that he thought i could do that's really cool and it's been and and everybody here every every employee every person that's been part of our team for years we still, we all care about our buyers, you know, and we've spent some money when we shouldn't have, but it was the right (laughs) thing to do. And so that's kind of what we've been about for 31 years. Wow. Willard, that is such a, such a great insight to what builders are experiencing right now. You guys, some great takeaways to understanding the construction market, understanding when maybe you are buying a house and it's delayed for various reasons. I know I've seen with you, Willard, having delays for permitting. The, oh. the, sometimes they're just difficult to get permits and then difficult to get the construction loans. Right. And, and to get the sub to be in a timely manner yeah. to come, you know, we uh, the key to building a home is your scheduling of your superintendent. What's frustrating when you want to use a certain guy and he hasn't, yeah. he, I'll be there Thursday, then it's a week later. So that seven days, you can't move forward to your painting. Yeah, it's been the last two and a half years has been the hardest time of our career. We made it. We got through it. And we, you know, I don't want to go through it again, but it was uh, but but people thought we had people that were making stupid, stupid decisions, paying fifty, sixty thousand dollars over ass price. I wouldn't do that. Yeah. I had a, a guy gave me a cousin. He wanted to buy a house. Here's the price. I want to give you this. I don't. I'm not going to take that. <laughs> it won't appraise, number one. 
<laughs> and you always have to have an exit. Yeah. You always got to be able, your job may change. You may get a new opportunity. You got to sell your home. And he gave me a few words that I won't repeat. And But I, I don't know why people felt like that. Yeah, yeah. I know. I, I agree. Um, I think I think that the market we've been seeing and then the higher interest rates have yeah. really, really made everyone kind of reevaluate the way they're doing things. You kind of have to move and pivot, yes. which I think is what a lot of what you're doing with these. Yes, absolutely. Cottages. And in this the city attorney has been the city attorney for 26 of these towns and he's watched it just really die. And it, it was something that we bought into it. We think it's there. We think it's an opportunity for investors. I think it's opportunity for a young couple. To, you know, my wife and I, when we bought our first house, it was $29,000. Wow. $29,000. Wow. And the payment was $84 a month. <laughs> I sure do miss that. <laughs> you know, but, but, but you, you know, it, it, it's everything has gone up except wages. Yeah. And, and the thing that we have to do is, you know, we're not a company that has to make a 40% profit. We're not looking for that. We're looking, you know, I read a book one time. It was about a rodeo, rodeo uh, guy that uh, was a caretaker for a large rodeo and their, and their attendance got down. Mm. And he wrote this book about how to put butts in seats. Oh. And I just kind of reversed it. How yeah. do I put bodies in houses? Yeah. And you do that by offering, you know, your your expertise and what it will sell for. You know, you always have to have an exit. And but today, you know, uh, I, I remember one of the funniest stories ever in home building. We all did for Mike in the nineties. Mm. Was no granite. Yeah. The the solid surface was something that was so expensive. Then when granite came out. You know, everybody wanted granite. <laughs> and my dad has granite. Yeah, but he's worked 40 years to yeah, get that yeah. granite. And the young kids want it, and they'd price their stuff out of the house. They, yeah. They'd go to their mortgage company, well, we're adding this, this, and this. And they'd come back, well, I don't qualify. Yeah. Well, if you cut this out and this out, it's your first home. People only live in their first home three to, to four and a half years. Mm. Their family grows. Yeah. And they want to move up. Mar mine and Marcia's first house was 1300 square feet yeah two car garage and it was and the payment was 89 dollars a month that's amazing you can't even buy a used car for a you could no. two months. <laughs> so it's it's something that we're excited about it we hope everybody will will join in at least call heather and ask her you know what do we have what to rent what you know blah 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 it's it could be uh, i think it'll be amazing yeah well, if you have any questions, you're welcome to reach out to us at invest at rpcinvest.com. We will circle back to you for sure. Um, and then again, Willard, thank you. Always. Thank you for meeting with me. Yes, ma'am. Willard's become one of my favorite people. <laughs> so so fun to work with. So um, I work hard on it. <laughs> that's right. Well, it comes off effortless on my side. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We have a, we're a good team. Yes. So until next time, you guys go out and make something happen. This has been the Get Real Podcast. To subscribe and for more information, including a list of all episodes, go to getrealestatesuccess.com.